Somebody gets excited in church, we start to call them, oh, they're just a little too fanatical, a little too crazy. I mean, if you're going to get crazy about something, if you're going to get loud about something, would it not be for Jesus, the one that shed his blood for you and me so we can have life and life more abundant? Shall yes! My God. And I refuse to let anybody try to take away my shout and my celebration to my Savior, my Lord, the one that set me free, the one that turned my life around, the one that gave me a hope and a future. Shall yes! Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It says make a joyful noise unto yeah. the Lord. Yeah. You know what that word, you know what that word means? Let me just, can I do this for a second? Can I? Can I? <laughs> no, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Noise, you know the definition of that in the Webster is senseless sound. Yeah. Watch this, watch this. Senseless sound. So watch this. See, from a world's point of view, when we shout like this, it seems to be senseless sound. But from heaven's point of view, it's a sweet aroma. Watch this. See, because it's a sweet aroma to the Lord. It touches the heart of the Lord. When we shout and make a joyful noise, it's letting him know that we love him and we're thankful for what he's done in our lives. And see, some of us, we've been through so much and come out of so much because of him. Not once, a couple times, amen. And you get to a place like right now, this moment that I'm having, even myself right now, and some of you are in this place right now, maybe some of you at home, and you just... Have a moment of remembering once again those altars, those altars, those all. See, I'm sharing these, this text today, and it's bringing back the altars, the altars of his goodness and his mercy and his patience. How he, the reinstatements and the, and the, and the willing, the openness, the door being open to come back to the house. See, 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 see. And when you start to think of those moments and those altars, you don't even have eloquent words to, 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 to say to the Lord because you get to a point where you can't even put a sentence together to, to say thank you. In other words, so, so at a certain point, all you could do is just shout hallelujah. All you could do is just say a few things, amen. So the neighbor next to you might be looking, what in the world's going on, amen? What are they saying? What are they shouting for? See, there's so much that you want to say to God because of what he's done in your life and you don't have the, term, you don't have the eloquence to put the words together at that moment, the whole sentence or the whole paragraph and all you can do is So be careful here tonight and watching home when someone looks and says, my goodness, that person's lost somewhere. That person's really mad. What are they doing? You, Cause see, you don't know what they've been through and you don't know what they've come out of. You think you know, but you don't. You only know some of it. You only know some of the testimony. So be careful not to judge. Be careful not to look at somebody within the church that might have an extra little jump to them. Amen. And then at the, on the other end also, I've said this before, when someone's quiet, you don't know what they've been through Amen. and what kind of a day it was. And you know them coming to church and just lifting up their hands at that moment is giving their best to God that night. So be careful not to look down at them because that is their, to, that, to, that, to, to the Lord that night, that was a mighty voice. Amen. In other words, we shouldn't be looking to the left. We shouldn't be looking to the light, to the right. We should be looking up anyways, amen? Because I, because then I, my question is this, and I've said this before, is when someone is able to say, well, look at the way this person's acting, or this way, look at the way this person's jumping, or this, look at the way this person's praising. This one's too loud, this one's too quiet. My question is, if you're doing all that, how are you worshiping God yourself? You're so busy, consumed by what they're doing. My question is, I, how can you be looking at them and worship God at the same time?
little more? Jonah, real quick, I'm just going to use this. Jonah, the Lord spoke to, gave him an opportunity to serve in the ministry, to go preach a revival uh, to a city, um, um, to be his ambassador, to be his mouthpiece. Well, no, the Bible tells, tells us that Jonah, um, when, he, when he had that opportunity, he departed and went contrary to the word of God, did not obey God, did his own thing. But when he came to his senses and called upon the name of the Lord, um, the Lord, the Bible says after he was swallowed up, amen, by, by, by a great fish, praise the Lord, amen. And when he called upon the name of the Lord, he was, he, was, he was given up by that fish, and the Lord came to him the following chapter, and the words were this, the Lord gave him another opportunity, not just to come back to the things of God, but to do exactly, to, do, to have the opportunity to do exactly the same thing he had the opportunity to do the first time before he messed up. That's what the Bible says. The word of God came to him a second time. He was reinstated to his original position. I want to encourage you here tonight. God wants to encourage you. That God loves you. And when you call upon his name, he has forgiven you. And he wants to use you before it's all said and done. Amen. Let me say it like this. And Greg, you said it earlier. Your best chapter is yet to be written on this earth for his glory if you put your faith in him and follow him with all your heart. Amen? Amen. Shout, that's me. That's Can I give you one more? Amen. One more. Uh, the third thing to jump, and there's so much in this story, and I might come back to this this weekend. There's so much more. But, but just for tonight, um, number three, number three, um, um, uh, the third thing that, 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 that jumps out to me um, Oh, you know what? Let me, let me, before we go to number three, let me also give you one more scripture for number two. Let me give you some more. Let me give you one more scripture. Where's it at? Joel chapter twenty-two. Joel chapter two, verse twenty-five. Let me just give you one more scripture to go with number two, just to back it up with scripture. Amen. What God wants to do for you, if you want it. There it is. And I will restore to you. Look at someone say, that's you. That the locust have eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and you shall eat in. So he's talking about someone that has lost, something that has been taken, some that, that has been, that has missed it and has been in a mess. And God's word is this to us here that he says, listen, I'm going to restore and give you another opportunity and you shall eat in plenty. Plenty means overflow and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord, your God, who hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Let me, let me say this. Uh, plenty and satisfied. He's going to restore and bring you back to a place. You know what that word means? Let me, let me give you a picture of it. I've, 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 I've shared this before. It's like going to dinner, eating a T-bone steak. Well done. A big old potato. Butter. Salt. A little bit of pepper. Big salad prior to it with some Greek olives, some feta cheese, olive oil, vinegar, oregano. <sighs> Followed with, let me say this, chicken noodle soup, then T-bone steak, potato, vegetables. And at that point where you're like stuffed, dessert comes big old chocolate cake big old cheesecake 